today I would like to share with you a few learning ways, a few learning strategies and also would like to introduce you to a few pieces that upon my opinion are really good for uh, this purpose. So actually I would suggest to start mastering double thirds not with uh, pieces that contain double thirds themselves but actually from a few studies with broken thirds. This is when you play not double thirds simultaneously but kind of break them first. So for example Lemoine or Czerny have plenty of such studies and below in the description I will provide a list of pieces that are uh, suitable for that. Mm -hmm. So for example there is a very lovely study of uh, Lemoine in E minor and so on. So here you have broken thirds and in order to master that you might actually break those figures and play them for example in pairs releasing your hand in between. And in order to achieve best results you might actually lean toward the first one a bit finding enough support in the knuckle and controlling that your wrist is flexible and released. And you play them both on one movement. Like down, up. As soon as you feel comfortable with that you might group them in the opposite way, playing the first note separately and then grouping the second with the third one and so on. And you always try to unify those notes, those pairs, within one wrist movement. So like down, up, down, up. Of course, also controlling that you release fingers quickly, so you don't hold any of them like that. You release all fingers immediately. And then as soon as you feel comfortable with playing them in pairs like that, or oppositely, You start playing them in groups of six notes, but still trying to unify them within one wrist movement. Releasing each finger immediately when the next one hits the key, so you don't hold anything longer than necessary. Otherwise you would have something like that. And a unifying movement of the wrist for the whole group would be like down, up. So you have kind of a small circle that you draw with a wrist. One of the entry level uh, pieces for mastering double thirds is a tube by list in D minor. And please don't be afraid by the name of Ferenc Liszt. Many people when they get a suggestion to play uh, some piece by Ferenc Liszt they start panicking because there is a common belief that Liszt has composed only incredibly difficult pieces. But actually this set of etudes is extremely useful and suitable for intermediate players. So, so this etude in D minor for double thirds sounds approximately like that. And so on. So in order to master something like that I would suggest you to break the work into different stages. So you would resolve one thing at a time, being able to concentrate on it and not being overwhelmed by a lot of things that you have to resolve simultaneously. So much to think about. So at first you might want to find stability in each of the thirds and control that you release all fingers as soon as they are done. So at this stage you don't think about legato or about connection between notes but you think only about finding enough support and stability in each third. So you just play one note at a time thinking about a couple of things. First stability in fingers, so you have a very stable knuckles bridge and a very released, very flexible wrist. And you just release your hand between each third. Release, release, release. As soon as you work through the whole piece like that and you feel really comfortable with each separate third, you might proceed to the step two and start grouping them actually. And I would suggest you to do that in the following way. So you separate the first one and then connect the second and the third and so on. 
at the second one you apply more weight going down with your wrist and then up What is also important is to control that you release all fingers immediately when you hit the next key. So when I hit that one, my previous fingers release immediately. And the next stage would be group them differently. So you group the first and the second, applying more support on the first one, like going with your wrist down, up and playing the next one separately, so... So you might work through the whole piece like that. And afterwards, you proceed to the next stage, playing already all three notes at once. Here you do the same thing, you try to find a unifying wrist movement for the whole group. So it's like down, up, releasing each finger immediately. So there are two things to think about. First, a unifying movement of the wrist for the whole group. As you see, I try to apply more weight on the second one. So the first and the third would be slightly softer, slightly lighter. I do that because the fourth finger is the weakest one. And when you would play that faster, most of the time you would have problems with the fourth finger because it, it's not difficult to hit the first note. It's also not that difficult to hit the last one. But the second one that you play with the fourth finger is really tricky and this is actually where people usually get clumsy when playing double thirds. So playing like that, applying slightly more weight on the fourth finger. You teach your hand being able to help the weakest fingers with the weight of the hand. So when playing faster, you might still do that micro movement in order to get a necessary smoothness, a unifying movement of the wrist with uh, a slightly more support on the second, third, and controlling that you release each finger when you hit the next one. And then when you feel comfortable with each separate group, you might think about connecting the whole passage in order to create this legato effect and to play smoothly the whole passage. So. And there are a couple of things to think about. First of all, connection between hands. That part. So you might want to control that your last uh, note from the left hand is properly connected with the next note of the right hand. Because it should sound actually as it would be played with just one big hand. And in order to achieve this smoothness, you think about this connection between hands and also apply slightly more weight on the second group. So you try to create this kind of wave with a small climax in the center. So, And then when you have a development section, when you approach some climax, for example, you might build the phrase slightly differently. So not toward the center, but all the way to the highest note. Playing the third group actually louder. Another great study to master double thirds is, uh, of course, by Carl Czerny. Well, he has a lot of uh, good studies. And in the description to this video, I will uh, write uh, the list of pieces and provide some links with the scores. Um, of pieces with double third, so you can master them. This study by Czerny that um, sounds like... In order to learn something like that, the best thing is to break it in groups. So I would separate the first one, release the hand, and then play the next group till the next strong beat. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, obviously releasing the hand between groups. And 
at this point you might not think about legato just think about releasing the fingers fast enough as soon as you feel comfortable with that you might uh, learn that in longer groups so you separate the first still but then play eight notes at once something like that and at this point you already start thinking about connecting those groups so you release your third finger but you hold your thumb trying to be as released as possible in your hand so you release the hand because anyway you can't connect the third and the fourth finger here it's not possible it's not possible it would sound extremely clumsy so you release the third finger faster holding just the thumb and then as you feel comfortable with that you start playing that uh, in even longer groups but even when you will start playing that through as a longer line try still to feel that release between groups that you have mastered before very tiny wrist movement in order to get rid of tension here 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 as faster you play as more you minimize this movement so at the end it will be almost not noticeable so basically when you have a legato when you have to play legato in double thirds you can't provide it in both voices it's a very similar story to Brahms exercise you have to play that legato It's not possible to provide legato here, for example, because you have to change positions. So there are actually two possible options. Option number one is to cheat. It's cheating. It's 100% cheating. So you play one hand position, then you release your fingers, but connect that with your wrist. So as you see, I separate that with fingers, but I connect that with the wrist and apply a little bit of pedal here so as you see i don't play physical legato but i connect that with my wrist and with the pedal and the second option is to provide as much physical legato as possible namely at least in one voice so i release the first finger fast but i hold my fifth finger and try to achieve as much freedom as much release in my hand as possible because this is the only way to be able to reach the next third releasing the hand the best thing of course is just to stop at the last note of the position and really checking that you have a very flexible hand so you might be able to reach the next note without much suffering release and now let's have a look at some passages from uh, piano pieces so for example Liszt has a lot of double thirds for example in uh, Petrarca's sonnet uh, there is a beautiful double third passage that sounds like <laughs> I'm not going to uh, speak about that martellata, that's a topic for another video that I'm going uh, to record uh, hopefully soon, so don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell in order not to miss it. What's important about such passages like this one? First thing, you don't play physical legato. Actually, Liszt writes himself non-legato here, so you play each note separately. Releasing your hand after each note. So, and when you learn, try to really find enough support in each third. Releasing the hand, having some support. So, you don't really use any muscle force, you just kind of lie on the fingers releasing them very quickly and then i break such passages in groups following the fingering so the first group would be always using 
two four and three one. So we'll have two four three one two four three one two four three one two four three one. Releasing after each third. Then it's very essential to release your wrist and start a new group with two five, and then I slide to two four. So here you see I slide with my second finger from F sharp to F. And this is a very common situation for double thirds actually. Barely in every passage like this you have to slide with one finger from a black key to the white key. And in order to efficiently do that you have to release your hand a lot. It's not possible to do that with blocked hand. So, so you hit those notes and then you release your hand moving it slightly downwards but not too much though so then I have like five four three four three and then re you release your hand and start the third group that has actually absolutely the same fingering as the second one so we have one group release release and then I try to play the whole group each group using just one wrist movement while releasing fingers after each third. So my hand goes slightly down and up, down, up, down, up. And when I will play that through all those three groups at once, I still try to release my wrist in between, between the groups. Release, release. So I will do that with gaps until I really feel comfortable with it. And when I feel really comfortable, I will diminish that gaps. Then a slightly shorter gap. And even shorter. And almost without the gap. And one of the most important thing about this double thirds that you try to avoid any muscle effort actually because you might either play fast or loud. Amen. Especially if you have more extreme examples like for example from Chopin's Prelude, uh, the last one. One of the most important thing is to avoid any muscle effort. So you try to reach that clarity, that um, brightness of the sound using the weight of the hand and stability of your fingers but you don't really work with with your fingers because that would always hold you back and not let you develop a faster tempo so the only way to play that is actually lightly and non legato and in case of such passages that should be like kind of really overwhelming really loud you might actually throw your hand in the beginning, marking the first three or four notes, like in and then play lighter the rest. And of course, it's very important to choose a comfortable fingering. And if you have a longer passage like this one, it's absolutely essential to find a fingering that would be same for each octave. So that's it for today. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe and see you next time.